good morning uh, delegates uh, the next is session is uh, handled by dr abubakar yes sir yes is it audible yeah yeah okay continue uh, by uh, dr abubakar kadangal uh, on topic on how you understand the speed flow about uh, abubakar kadangal uh, he was professor at lis college of engineering kasaragod from uh, 1994 and he did his btech uh, from rec kalyat mtech from iit madras uh, with specialization in thermal turbo machines phd from iit bombay uh, the thesis entitled scaling and modeling of two phase natural circulation boiling instabilities this research was related to uh, advanced heavy water reactor programming program of india and he had a unido fellowship for training in flow measurement and control at national engineering laboratory uk and he had worked as a research engineer at fluid control research institute fcri palakkad from uh, december 187 to 94 from uh, october 1994 onwards he was working as a faculty in mechanical engineering department of lbs college of engineering kasaragod his research interests are uh, thermal and fluids engineering and he taught several courses like advanced engineering fluid dynamics computational fluid dynamics finite element methods advanced fluid mechanics etc sir please start thank you sir raj kumar very good morning to all of you so we had a wonderful session by professor yunus sanjal in which he highlighted the importance of simplicity in understanding without losing the power and also he insisted or emphasized the importance of understanding the theory so theory is very important before applying or using the for in solving problems or solving in engineering problems so engineers has to solve problems related to industrial and our practical real life problems so for that the understanding of theory is very important so our sessions we have sessions organized or collected from various sectors with a lot of practical applications and so i thought I just review or just give an overview of fundamentals of fluid flow theory which we have everyone have already studied so we will be teaching this for many years but uh, before going to the practical applications or real life applications of the fluid dynamics in various sectors we thought it will be better to have a, or to review our fundamentals in a small session so the objective is to just review the fundamentals of fluid mechanics the fluid dynamics or fluid flow what we everyone will be knowing so the overview of presentation we will have a small introduction then various classifications then applications the fields of application then just then or of the governing equations which are nothing but the conservation equations as professor sanjal was saying then a small introduction of turbulence because we have a separate session on some aspect of turbulence by professor anil lal these are the overview of my presentations introduction so everyone knows fluid dynamics is 
the branch of science concerned with moving fluids. So Professor Sanjil was saying that science is the one thing, but for our convenience of understanding, we have divided into number of sectors or number of branches. So fluid mechanics or fluid dynamics is one of the such small division of the entire science. Now, all of you know, the vast majority of the universe exists in a fluid state. That is the atmosphere and oceans cover, covering this planet are fluids. You know that more than 75 percentage of Earth is water. Also, above that, we have atmosphere which is surrounded by air. So, most of our Earth or universe is full of these fluids. So life is not possible without fluids and fluid mechanics has unquestioned scientific and practical importance. So with, for our real life or duty life, we will have to handle a lot of questions or answers to the questions related to our practical field, related to the fluid mechanics. So we, birth, we breathe we drink water all these are fluids but for that we may not need any understanding of the fluid mechanics but as an engineer to utilize the resources for natural resources in an efficient way we need to understand the basic science behind this fluid behaviors and the laws of the fluid flow. Okay, for that. So whatever the matter available or resources naturally available, we we'll treat it as a continuum mechanics because we assume there is no voids or that is the, or the material is completely filled out, filled without any voids and that we call it as continuum mechanics. So in the continuum mechanics, we generally divide into two groups. One is called the solid mechanics and the fluid mechanics. So in continuum mechanics, we have mainly solid mechanics and fluid mechanics. So our focus presently is fluid mechanics. So fluid mechanics is further to fluid statics and fluid dynamics because mechanics has branches statics and fluid dynamics and fluid statics is only related to the uh, floating bodies and stability etc because in static fluid only force is the pressure force no shear stresses etc will be there in the static fluid so only pressure will be there related to the pressure will have a net pressure force buoyancy and related stability etc will be there in fluid statics, whereas in fluid dynamics, many things are there. So most of the applications in process and power production, transportation, etc., related to the fluid dynamics. So that's why we are focusing on fluid dynamics. In various fluid dynamics, we may treat of internal flows, discuss of internal flows, external flows, single phase flow multi-phase flow, laminar flow, turbulent flow, compressible flow, etc. So some of the flow classifications have direct practical application. So internal flows in through pipes, pipe networks, then turbo machineries, flow measuring devices, flow control devices, etc. The internal flows will be there. And the external flows around aircraft, spacecrafts, and dams, structures, etc. will be the external flows are important. And most of the industrial process 
and power production, etc., we may have uh, in hydropower, in aerodynamics, etc., we'll have the single phase flows. And multi phase flows also will be there in thermal power plants, nuclear reactors, in refrigerations, etc. We come across multi phase flows also, nozzles, etc., will be there. Laminar flow also in some cases will be there, but most of the real or practical flows are turbulent flows. The so laminar flow as well as turbulent flows are all important. Then compressible flow, also where the density is changing with pressure is also or gas dynamics also important in the space applications. So we will be have various sections related to these different classes of flows during our FTP program. Okay. So the various application sectors of the fluid dynamics. So in the previous slide, we have seen the various classes of flows, you know, various application sectors. So important applications involving in transportation. So transportation means in vehicles, automobiles, aircrafts, aeroplanes, ships, everywhere, the fluid mechanics is very important in its uh, fuel in the circulation of the power production, external air, reducing the drag, uh, that is air conditioning, all these, the fluid mechanics is important in all the sectors of transportation, in sea, air, on road, all this, it is important. And also power productions, power generation and conversion, whether it is thermal power, hydropower, nuclear power, or non-conventional power sources everywhere, the geothermal power everywhere, this fluid mechanics is very important. Also in process industries, in material manufacturing, oil and gas industries, chemical fertilizers, in all the type of industries, this uh, fluid mechanics is very important. Also in food production, that also uh, food processing industries is important. And in civil infrastructure, like in construction of uh, dams, ways, ports, buildings, etc. Also, the knowledge of fluid mechanics is important. That is, theoretical knowledge is important in all these practical applications in various fields. So fluid dynamics is a branch of science that is after narrowing it has come. It is further divided based on what type of or what is the method of investigation we follow in understanding the fluid dynamics or how to solve the problems related to fluid dynamics. So advances in fluid dynamics arises from mathematical analysis computer simulations or experiments. So, so there are three streams. So theoretical or analytical fluid dynamics. Another is uh, computational fluid dynamics and experimental fluid dynamics. So mainly the three streams or the three up methods of Investigation in fluid dynamics are one is theoretical, it's also called analytical fluid dynamics, and computational fluid dynamics. A lot of uh, developments are being taking place in CFD nowadays. And experimental is one of the oldest methods. So experimental and uh, theoretical were there earlier, but uh, recently, a lot of developments are there in the computational fluid dynamics.
So theoretical method, it is based on a theoretical model. So both analytical and computational method, the performance analysis is done with a theoretical or mathematical model. So actually the physical natural system or is the physical system in, in terms of some physical shapes or physical quantities. So for our theoretical analysis, we need to convert that to a set of equations in terms of scientific laws. So that type of theoretical or mathematical model is required. Representing the physical system by mathematical equation is called mathematical model. So the, the basis for computational method or theory, analytical method is the mathematical model. So mathematical models are set of equations, maybe algebraic or differential or integral equations. So set of equation, either it may be algebraic equation, differential or integral. But in fluid dynamics, because it is moving, it will be always either differential or integral equations because that rate of change will be taking place. So it will be a differential or calculus. Algebra will be there when it is at rest or in statics. We have a physical system. What we need is a mathematical model for that. And it is obtained the conversion from physical to mathematical model is based on the, the invisible laws. That is what uh, that Sanjil was saying. So that uh, which governs the nature. So using that invisible there, but you, scientist has explored and formulated the laws. So with the help of the laws, we can convert the physical system into the mathematical model. And this mathematical model is the base for our theoretical studies. Either it may be analytical or computational model, sorry, computational method. So analytical fluid dynamics or computational fluid dynamics. So analytical approaches are limited for finding solutions to idealized and simplified problems. So when converted into a mathematical model, the resulting will be a set of differential equations mostly. Or if it is a control volume approach, we may have a integral equations. The solution of this integral or differential equations exist only very rare cases that is very where the problems are simplified. As such, if the problems are complex, we may not, or there are no methods of finding the analytical solutions. So this, that's why this approach is, is limited to finding solutions of idealized and simplified problems. Idealized means we will assume many neglect or ignore many of the negligible uh, phys uh, physical phenomena. Sometimes we, uh, viscosity will be neglected or sometimes friction will be neglected. Like that, many simplifying or, or comparing the order of magnitude, variation in one direction will be negligible compared to the variation in other direction. So the variation in that direction will be neglected, etc. will be there. So that is the analytical method. But such solutions are helpful for developing insight and understanding and for comparison with numerical and experimental results. So even though it is limited, but if you have a solution that you will be, or we will get an intuition how the actual system will be, be behaving with uh, this simple theoretical solutions. So that will be helpful in understanding 
and also we can use it for validating our computational and experimental results. So the simplifications are necessary in analytical solution because of the complexity of the fluid flow, real fluid flow phenomena. So the real fluid flow phenomena are very complex, so these assumptions are needed. So the, some examples of this analytical fluid dynamics are what I have studied, Stokes first problem, flow between two parallel plates, flow between rotating cylinders, Stokes second problem, then Stokes flow, then boundary layer, Prandtl's boundary layer formulation, glacier solution, etc. are examples for this analytical and that is are limited with a lot of assumptions. We may assume it is one dimensional uh, similarity solutions, etc. will be there. So, so these are the, some practical, but it has limitations. But nowadays, this analytical is not so not that popular, but uh, that some classic analytical solutions are used for validating the computational method as benchmark problems. In computational method, approximate numerical solutions are obtained using computational methods. So the basis for both the mathematical model, the analytical methods, we have the solution. If the equations are simple, we can have closed form or exact solutions. But if the solutions by exact mathematical methods are not possible, we get an approximate numerical solutions. So that method is called the computational method. So here the solutions are not exact, but what we get is numerical solutions which are approximate. So the, because the differential or integral equations, the solution is complex. So what is done is in these methods is the numerical, sorry, the differential equations are approximated by algebraic equation. And then algebraic equation are easy to solve compared to uh, differential equations. So the differential equations are approximated by algebraic equation, which can be solved by direct or iterative numerical methods. So that's why it is an approximate method. So differential is approximated to algebraic. There are many methods like uh, finite difference, finite element, finite volume, etc. So in CFD, mostly this finite volume and finite element methods are popular. But sometimes if it is properly validated, these computational methods may result in unrealistic solutions. So it has to be careful if we are going for computational. That is proper validation is must in the case of computational methods. And our third class is, or three, third stream is experimental method. So Instead of going with mathematical model, we have a physical model itself. So we need a physical model and conduct experiments or test on the physical model. <coughs> the physical model may be of the actual size or a scaled down or scaled up model. So for large systems, we may make smaller size physical models and do the test on that and the act performance on the actual model can be extrapolated from the result obtained from the scaled down models. So if that is the system, actual system is very minute and very difficult to fabricate and test, then we may scale up, models will be prepared and experiment will be tested and it will be trans uh, the results will be extra extrapolated. So that is for that we need some scaling laws, etc. So, so the physical maybe on scaled down or scaled up models. Or sometimes actual size also can be done. What is called prototype. 
the scaling logs are required to predict the performance of the actual size model. <coughs> so the test model is not of actual size. We may have to use the scaling loss to predict the results. But that also one drawback of external approaches is costly in terms of money and time. It will take a lot of time to fabric make, make the physical model and a lot of resources. But it gives really reliable, realistic results. So the physical models, there, even though there are many limitations, will give a realistic, reliable results. And these results can, will be used for validating the computational models. So usually, uh, scaled down physical model will be created and results will be generated. Also, parallelly, a computational model will be prepared. And the result of this computational method will be validated by the experimental results. And then this computational model can be used for any size of the physical systems. So once we have a validated computational model, model that can be used to predict performance of any of the systems. Also in practical, there will be some difficulty in simulating the extreme conditions. Extreme pressure, extreme temperature, etc. may not be possible in physical models, but in computational model, we can give any number because we are just inputting some numbers. So there is no restriction of extreme conditions in computational models. <coughs> Okay, in today's afternoon, we will have a session on some pumps and turbines in which their scaling studies will be discussed. Then between solid and fluid, main difference, that is the very, very fundamental thing everyone will be knowing and just, uh, just refreshing it. The solid can resist stresses at rest. Fluids cannot resist stresses at rest. So from this, the definition of fluids comes. So at rest, the difference is solids can resist stresses, whereas fluids cannot resist stresses at rest. So that is why the solid statics only pressure is there, no stresses. But pressure is not only normal stress will be there, which we call it as pressure in fluids in motion. Solid stress is proportional to the shear strain because we have a finite shear strain in solids. Not in motion when it is deformed. In solid is deformed, it is proportional to shear strain in motion. In fluid, shear stress is proportional to the rate of shear strain. Because fluids are continuously deforming, solids finite deformation. So when it is continuously deforming, there is a rate of shear strain. In fluids, shear stress is proportional to rate of shear strain. So shear stress is proportional to shear strain in solids. That is that we call it as tau is equal to g into gamma. So g is the modulus of rigidity. It's a Hooke's law. Okay. That is stress is proportional to strain. And the proportionally constant is G called modulus of rigidity in the case shear stress. In fluids, it is proportional to rate of strain, that is D by DT of gamma. So tau is proportional to mu into D by DT of gamma. And that mu, we call it as coefficient of viscosity. In fluids, tau is equal to mu d by dt of gamma. 
gamma. Here the proportional like on the on the proportionality constant is coefficient of viscosity. So this is the main difference in solids and fluids. Another start starting approach in the fluid or thermodynamics or in thermal fluids is we have a system and control volume. This is another fundamental thing we need to understand. The system, a quantity of matter or a definite mass. Uh, and in system, mass cannot cross the boundaries. Right as system or closed system. Another control volume, a selected region in space with boundaries. Mass can cross the boundaries, open system. The closed system or open and open system or also system and control volume. Then fluid mechanics also you might have seen this Lagrangian approach and Eulerian approach. So Lagrangian is will be focusing on a particles or a fixed collection of particles. So that is a system approach. Whereas control volume is a fixed region. That is region will be there through which mass can enter and go out. So that Eulerian approach. The so system and control volume approaches are followed in modeling this fluid flow problem also. Only, only system approach, another is control volume approach, or it is Euler, Lagrangian and Eulerian approaches. The system will have connected mass. If it is moving, it is the whole system will be moving. Whereas in control volume, control volume is bounded and inside some matter will be there. So with respect to time, the control volume boundary will not move, but what is inside will be moving. So that is control volume. The region is fixed, and it is what is there in that that matter will be moving. So that is the main system and control volume approach. And there are some cases moving control volume also possible. So with moving boundaries, control volume with moving boundaries also there. And okay, then okay, next to the conservation equations. So that is, we have a physical systems and we, this, some classes we have discussed. So using this uh, conservation principles, we can get the mathematical model or set of equations. So that equations may be of either integral form of equations or maybe of differential form of equations. So in the previous slide, we said of system and control volume. So if we formulate the equations based on a control volume, control volume we have a definite or a finite shape and finite mass will be there. So if we start with a finite amount of matter or a control volume approach, what the resulting equation what we get is in the integral form. So that is called the integral form of conservation equations. And if we start from a differential element, a small element, and what we result will be in differential form of equations. So the governing equations usually available in integral form as well as differential forms. So integral form equations, the basic conservation of mass, momentum, and energy will be there. So whether it is integral form or differential form, the basic principle is mass cannot change. So mass has to remain constant. But the rate of change of mass of the system is zero. So d by dt, that is rate of change of mass with respect to time, remains the same, sorry, is zero. That is mass remains the same, that means the rate of change is zero. So this is the conservation of mass equation for a system. So if we want to put it for the control volume, control volume means the mass can cross the boundaries. So the control volume for a control volume, the conservation mass equation is this. It's d by dt of integral over the control volume rho dv. 
that is this first part is the change within the control volume and this is the rate of change with the, through the surface of the control volume so this uh, so you, this is the integral equation the two terms are physically only it is rate of change within the control volume and the second term is through the surface so this is the concept that is mass is conserved and this was uh, Professor Sanjal was illustrating with the, with the example of a bathtub. There is a system in which water is coming in and also going out, but the mass has to be conserved. So this is one of the fundamental equation, but it's also called the continuity equation. The next is the conservation of movement. The, that is momentum, rate of change of momentum is proportional to the force, or it is Newton's second law. That, uh, for, consider mass is, rate of change of mass is zero, whereas rate of change of momentum is not zero, it is proportional to the force. So that is the conservation of momentum equation, or Newton's second law, or in fluid, when applied to fluid flow, it is popularly known as nearest equations. So here, for a system, it is expressed as d by dt of momentum, that is mass into velocity. So velocity is a vector quantity, so d by dt of mv is equal to net force. Force is also a vector quantity. The vector quantity we can have its components, usually in Cartesian x, y, z coordinates. So this is a single vector equation. If you three components, we have three scalar equations. And then, the same thing applied to a control volume. So there will be rho V dV. It is mass into rho dV is mass multiplied by velocity. So momentum. So rate of change of momentum within the control volume is term plus momentum transfer through the control surface should be equal to that is the net momentum rate of change. That is d by dt of mv is expressed by these two terms. One is within the control volume, another is through the control surface of the control volume. Should be equal to the net force acting. So net force on part of, you'll have, know that body forces and surface forces. Usually body force is the gravity force. So one component of force is just acting over the entire volume. The body force is integrated over the control volume this part, it is just taken the g, rho g, it is the gravitational force. And another part is the surface force, that is acting on the surface. The surface forces act as, uh, it comes as the intensity of the surface at the stresses. So shear stresses and normal stresses will be there at the surface. And it is usually six components or nine components of stresses will be there. So it is in stress tensor. So in compact notation, it is denoted as sigma ij. It is a sensor. Once it is expanded, it will have that uh, three columns and three rows, sigma x, x, rho x, y, that stress will be there. And multiplied by the unit vector into surface area. So that is over the control surface. So total force here is one is the body force term acting over the volume and the surface force terms acting on the control surface. So this is the conservation of momentum equation for a control volume, which results in a integral form of equations. So when we study for computational fluid dynamics, most of this theory will be expressed in terms of this integral form of equations, actually the finite element method, etc. Starting will be based on the integral form of equations. So we should you know at least you know what the names for the various terms. So this is the rate of change, which is the with the on the through surface, etc. Conservation of energy. That is net energy in and out. Work energy, the heat and work should be equal to rate of change of energy of the system. So rate of energy, change in energy is equal to 
net work and heat. So that is uh, so work maybe shaft work and heat rate. So the sum of shaft work and heat flow should be equal to the rate of change of energy. E is the internal energy per uh, of the control volume Cv plus the control surface. So in each conservations or a control, we have two terms. One is within the control volume, another is on the surface. Now these expressions. In conservation mass, this other side is zero, whereas momentum we have the net force. In the case of energy, we have the net energy that is working and shaft. Heat in and work output will be taken. So these are the three fundamental equations in integrated form. So this is the general form. Depending on the problem, we can we we'll have the simplified forms, which, which will be more familiar to you in one-dimensional, incompressible. If you bring many assumptions, steady, etc., this it becomes our rho and beyond or is equal to rho and a and beyond is equal to that form of equation will be available from this. The continuity equation for conservation mass equation in differential form it will be like this d by dt of rho. Sorry, here it is functional dou by rho t, the partial derivative of density change with respect to time plus this is zero is equal to the differential form of equation. In vector form or in compact form, this will be written like this that is dou by dou t and this using del operator del dot rho v is equal to zero. So the same equation is put in the compact form using the del operator or vector calculus. An integral form is the same thing as we discussed as we said in the previous slide, we did this. And there's some special cases, that is if the flow is steady, there is no change with respect to time, this first term will not be there. So this will be this reduces to that. And in the case of the uh, integral form, this first term will not be there, it reduces to this form. In vector form, this, uh, this term, del dot rho is equal to zero. So if you have a case like this, a control volume or a part of a pipe flow, so with two inlet and exit sections, this will be the equation, del dot rho is equal to zero. So when we integrate rho, rho a average is equal, constant is equal to m dot, which will be resulting in rho and v1, a1 is equal to rho to v2. This is our fluid mechanics, elementary fluid mechanics, conservation of mass equation. And if rho is constant, we will have a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. So the general equation is this, based on the cases or simplifications, we can reduce to the simple cases. Some more special cases are, it is incomparable, same. If rho is also similar, we can take rho out. And this is the three-dimensional continuity equation. In vector form, del dot rho v, we can expand rho del dot v plus v del dot rho. So when rho is constant, this del dot rho is, will be zero. So what we have is rho into del dot v is equal to zero. Rho into del dot v is zero. Or del dot v is zero. Because rho cannot be zero, del dot v is equal to zero. So it's also called as dilatation. The real view is dilatation. So dilatation is zero for incompressible flow. That is for the case where rho is constant. Whether it is steady or unsteady, this is the case. When integral form is this, so when assume rho constant, this is there, or what we have is, or the control surface, V dot, N dot, DA is equal to zero. 
a1 a2 integral dA is a1 integral dA other sex will be 2 so it will becomes a1 is equal to a1 b1 is equal to a2 b2 this is our elementary continuity equation for incompressible flow the second equation is the first equation conservation of mass second set of conservation equation is conservation of momentum equation as we discuss rate of change of momentum is net force and in this various depending how much complexity or how much simplicity we include we have different names of these equations including Oshie's, Navier Stokes, Euler, Bernoulli's equations are all this come from these equations. Oshie equation it's also conservation motion, but Cauchy's equation, force terms are in stress components, applicable poles and solids. So this will be applicable for both solids because the stress and strain is related and differs only in solids and fluids. So in terms of stress component, it is same for both solids and fluids. That's why Cauchy's equation is for applicable for both solids and fluids. And differential equation in so that in solids it is the differential equation in mechanical solids and Euler equation so for invisible fluid so in, when it is the momentum equation for invisible fluids it is called Euler equation so no shear stress components will not be there only pressure is there that is the only normal component of stress will be there because we are ignoring the or neglecting the viscosity and third set of equation, navier stokes equation, the general form of for viscous flow with force in terms of velocity components. So to the Cauchy equation, we when once we substitute the constitutive equation that is relating stress to strain components, including both shear stress and normal stress, what result is the navier stokes equation. So that is Newton's second law for conservation of momentum equation. And Stokes equation is another equation in which the inertia forces for acceleration are neglected and viscous forces are included, then it becomes Stokes equations. So these four variants are there for conservation of momentum equations. Out of which the most popular one is the navier stokes equation and simplified form of navier stokes equations is the oil equation for implicit or potential flows. Conservation moment equation for inviscid flow. Inviscid. So what we consider is that we take a differential element. The stresses, only normal stresses will be there on the phases. So that the sum of the resultant will be our surface force and d by dt mb will be the other side. The x direction will be d by dt of mass is rho u and uh, delta, this delta v is change in velocity this time, dv by dt. The net <coughs> forces in x direction will be this. So using this, uh, that is f is equal to mass rate of change of momentum in x and y and z direction because it's momentum is a vector quantities usually we write in three directions sc scalar components so we will get the equations so i will just summarize it so euler equation in x direction will be this so this first term is the temporal rate of change with respect to time dou by dot t of rho u but it's also called the local rate of change and this is the convective rate of change and equal to the net pressure force and if there is a body force so this is the body force term this is the surface force term in terms of stress so here only stress is pressure being inviscid flow and this is called the oil so we can write it in three different directions x direction y direction and z direction so i just 
so the terms here is yes. This comes from the local acceleration. This is from the convective acceleration. So mass into acceleration. This is the inertia term. And this is the pressure, the surface force term. This is body force term. And both these are also referred as source terms. With body force or surface force also known as the source terms in the literature. This is all called the inertia terms. This is convective term. Because of convective acceleration, it is convective term. This is local acceleration or inertia terms. Same thing will be expressed using del operator, V dot del rho u. This is depending on x, y, z. The pressure in a first equation only in x direction. In second equation only in y direction, third equation in z direction. So the delta is called Kronecker delta. It will have some so these equations will be similar to you. That is called Euler equations, nothing but mass into acceleration is net force. In force, there are two one is surface force. Another is this. All these equations are in terms of unit volume. But if we take a small element or infinitesimal element of volume delta V, and the equations will be written, and after dividing by delta V, what we get this. So these are the equations for unit volume. So the, what another difference is solids and fluids it differs in. The constitutive equations are equations relating stress to strain components. That is, stress will be resulting when when I applied force. So it is stress is purely a mathematical quantity. It is nothing to do with the behavior or the physical nature of the material. Whereas strain is the the physical behavior. That is due to, to exerted load. How much it will be. Different deforming or straining. So different materials may have different amount of strain. So the, how it strains will be differing in solids and fluids. In solids, will have a finite deformation, whereas fluids, it will be keeping on deforming. So the relationship between this stress and strain or load and deformation is called the constitutive equations. So for fluids, the, that is the three normal stress components are there. The so sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz are the three normal stress components which are related to the rate of strain or velocity gradients by this equation. So sigma xx is actually its two components. One is this thermodynamic pressure and another is uh, due to normal stress due to the strain in x direction the deformation of the element in x direction so that is these two together so that is and this is expressed as q mu dou u by dou x minus 2 by 3 into mu del dot a this is from the stokes hypothesis so from stokes hypothesis these terms are obtained and these are the stress strain relationship and this term will not be there for incompressible flow because we said that for incompressible flow del dot v is equal to zero so these terms will disappear if the flow is incompressible so this is a general constitutive equation and the normal stress components and shear components will be from our newton's law of viscosity we can express like this so this to total six stress, three normal stress components and three normal, sorry, shear strain components are related to the velocity components. And once we substitute this into a Cauchy's equation, Cauchy's equations are in terms of stress components. What we get is the nearest stroke equation. So that is. D by dt of rho u, or it's in, in the, that is total 
ഒരു സബ്സ്റ്റാൻഷ്യൽ ഡിഫറൻഷ്യൽ ദിസ് വൺസ് വി എക്സ്പാൻഡ് വി ഹാവ് ദാറ്റ് ലോക്കൽ ആൻഡ് കൺവെക്റ്റീവ് ടേംസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ സോഴ്സ് ഒരു പ്രഷർ നോർമൽ പ്രഷർ ടേം ആൻഡ് ദിസ് കംസ് ഫ്രം ദ viscosity term and this comes from that that once you substitute that constitutive relation to the euler equation in simplifying we will result this and this is called the navier-stokes equation in three direction we have three this so various terms are this left hand side is the inertia term which includes local inertia as well as convective terms and this is the pressure gradient or pressure surface force surface force in the normal stress that is or pressure and this is the shear from the shear stress components or viscous force and this is also from the surface force and this x is the body force in x direction similarly y in body force in y direction and z body force in z direction in the z direction so it should be z so in expanded form this will become that is local plus convective is this so this is the general form of navier stokes equation in x and y direction so this here the terms are this is transient term is change with respect to time transient term or inertial term and this is convective term convective term is that or is also called non linear term because this term is u into dou u by dou x so it is non linear in nature in literature say that it will be referred as convective term or non linear term of navier stokes equation etc and this is usually referred as pressure gradient term or source term <coughs> this is diffusive term that is velocity is diffusive term or viscous term when this is the because of the dilatation or change in shape the dilatation term and this will disappear if the flow is incompressed and these are the body force terms body force terms also the source so pressure difference and this body force are the sources or causes of creating flow that's why they are called source terms even the complicated equation physically it is transient or inertia term convective term source term diffusion or viscous term etc so for incompressible flow that the last term because of this is zero it will disappear so this is the navier stokes equation we mostly using that simplified form for incompressible flow so rho into when it is incompressible it will be like this transient term convective term diffu- diffusive or viscous term and body force term same thing so this three we can just compactly express this using bell operator so if you find difficulty in remembering this lengthy expression same thing can be expressed in compact form using the del operators <coughs> so also you can at this the single equation also you can put it as that because that in terms of vector the three components can be combined in a single equation that is three scalar component in a vector on single vector equation vector term so it will be rho into rho v by dot that is local <coughs> acceleration term in convective that is v into del v so convective means in different directions will be u direction v direction z directions and the pressure gradient the viscous term <coughs> the del square term plus body force so the whole navier stokes equation in compact the 
vector form means just a single equation. Okay, we can <clears throat> combine all these various equations into a table like this. So any equation we have to left hand side and right hand side. <coughs> so various terms we come across as one is the local acceleration term, convection term, pressure gradient term, viscous term, body force term. So if you choosing or combining these various terms, we will get either Cauchy, Euler, Neuer, or Stoffication. So Cauchy is for in terms of stress components. So what we have Cauchy equation, we have this term will be there. Local acceleration is there. Convective acceleration also will be there. So if you want Cauchy equation, it will be rho dou by dou t in x dou u by dou t plus this will be. If it is x direction, you have to substitute u u u there. If it is y direction, the velocity in y, v v like that. Then this will be there. Here it will be in terms of stress components. <coughs> so this you will get Cauchy's equation. If you want the Euler equation, it will be this will be there. This term will be there. And now viscous term in the Euler equation because it is inviscid flow. So this will be there. This will be except viscous term. All the terms will be there. Cauchy's also all the terms will be there, but it will be pressure gradient and viscous term both together in terms of stress components. In Neuerstoch equation, all the terms are there. So the most general is the Neuerstoch equation, which contains all the terms. And Stokes is no inertia. It is very slow or creeping flows. We ignore the acceleration. In such cases, only these terms are there. So this is the Stokes equation. So all the popular equations, by collecting or picking the required terms, you can write the equations from this table. Okay, we are now discuss conservation of mass, momentum, and third basic conservation is conservation of energy. The conservation of mass is continuity equation. Conservation of momentum is Navier-Stokes equation or Euler equation, etc. And conservation of energy is our thermodynamics first law. The final is the conservation of energy equation. It is written like this. It is in terms of temperature. You can write it this in terms of enthalpy temp or temperature or in terms of heat, etc. So it is written in terms of temperature like this. So this is the heat conduction, heat input through conduction. And this is uh, To do this and this is phi is the viscous term because of the surface stresses and this is due to due to the pressure terms so in Cartesian it an expanded form this this is the general equation up it appears to be complex but this phi is a length a viscous dissipation term it's also a lengthy term It comes from the various stress terms. <clears throat> so this is the general form of conservation of energy and si simplified forms for one dimensional etc. We will have thermodynamics first law etc. So here also the local change or transient temperature, convective temperature change and through heat conduction through the surfaces in the body and viscous forces. Okay, thermal conductivity beta. So 
when we expand, this is in compact form, it is notated, but when we expand with the scalar compounds, it will be a lengthy expression. This is the dissipation term. But another is the we have the laminar and turbulent. So what is turbulent is you know in laminar the flows in streams. So only like this will be there. Whereas when it becomes turbulent, in addition to this uh, layers in a particular direction, perpendicular to that also some fluctuation will be there. Minor velocity fluctuation will be there. The main velocity will be the mainstream velocity perpendicular to that some fluctuating minor component of velocities also will be there. So usually by Reynolds decomposition, the velocity at any point at any instant can be put as a mean plus a fluctuating component. The mean component plus a fluctuating will be there. So in three directions it will be written as the expressing like this is called the Reynolds decomposition. And once the u bar is defined such that over a period of time, integrated from 0 to u, this is taken as a mean. So once you replace the velocity u v w component in nervous equation with this, we get the equation called the uh, Reynolds average the nervous equation. So this Reynolds decomposition, so the actual dou by dot t of u. But u is replaced with u bar plus u dash. So like that, in each equation, if you substitute this decomposition and simplifying that, what we get is called the Reynolds averaged Navier's equation. That is the basis of the turbulent flow model. So the after substituting, what we get is so we have an addition, an additional term is the here minus u dash, u dash minus u dash v dash minus u dash v. So these are the terms in came into the equation due to the fluctuating component. So this is similar to additional stress. So that's why it's called a Reynolds stress tensor. So actually we have never equation we have the shear stress or normal stress due to the viscosity. Here in addition to the viscosity there is due to the fluctuation of velocity components we have, have another additional stress, which is called the Reynolds stress. And these stress are proportional to the fluctuation of velocity. So this is a property of flow, whereas the other shear stress was property of the fluid. Viscosity is the property of fluid. The shear stress for the stress components to that is viscosity due to the flow fluid property, whereas the Reynolds stress is due to the this property of flow or the flow fluctuations. So higher the flow fluctuation, more may be the stress due to that. So that is so this is Reynolds stress tensor. And so this making how to predict the how to formulate for this stress components, fluctuating velocity component, how it creates the stress. And that part is called the turbulent models. So, namely, different types of models are there for finding out the fluctuating the stress created due to the fluctuating amount of velocity. So, there are zero equation models called the triangle mixing length model. That is zero equation means zero differential Cassians are involved in predicting this equation. And one equation models are there, but one differential equation. Will be used. That is turbulent kinetic energy. And two equations models are there. Two differential equations, that is the K epsilon or K omega models are of different two differential equations. We have one equation for K, another for dissipation rate right? epsilon, that is K epsilon. K is turbulent kinetic energy and the Epsilon is the dissipation rate. In secondary models, or second order models, Reynolds stress models and algebraic Reynolds model, that is, that is higher order, that is tensor models. Okay. So with this, we have just 
briefly overview the various topics of fluid dynamics we are all familiar just a review so before attending for the section i just review that there is basics or fundamentals of the fluid so the con we can conclude like uh, the continuity of def so continuously deforming material we call it as fluids so used in engineering whose behavior is to be modeled and predicted using continuous concept so the continuously deforming materials is the fluids which can be modeled for predicting its behavior using continuum concept so the fundamental conservation laws are the basis of mathematical law that is conservation of mass conservation of momentum and conservation of energy so based on this we will get the mathematical equations or mathematical model if we start from a control volume we get the integral form of equations and if we start from a differential element we will get the differential form of equations so both are either we can use integral approach for differential equation as the basis for the mathematical model in computation methods are getting approximate numerical solutions the most popular and challenging equation in term of is the nervous stoke equation because the nervous nervous stoke equation is a just general equation by solving it for different conditions we can get the solutions for various realistic problems and cfd is mainly concentrating on various algorithm for uh, different variants of nervous stoke equations and the nervous stoke equation is modified turbulent flows by decomposing velocity and greenhouse decomposition so the original nervous stoke equation is for the laminar flow but most of the practical cases or practical applications the flow will be of turbulent nature so the nervous stoke equation is modified using the reynolds decomposition to get the reynolds averaged nervous stoke equation so there are additional stress components due to this fluctuating velocity component and that has to be obtained from turbulence model so various turbulence models are available to determine the stress components so with this uh, i conclude my session any doubts or if you need any clarifications you can have you can have it okay, okay. Uh, this okay uh, it's time for uh, questions we had a raised hand from ambli pn madam please okay A any other any other questions any other questions the questions i uh, just uh, just quickly i reviewed this i'll be sharing the ppt you can go in detail with that later application okay okay uh uh thank you sir uh, uh, uh in this session aboka sir has explained the uh, what uh, uh Uh, analytical computational and experimental fluid dynamics and the interrelation between them uh, and uh, he started uh, uh, the concept of fluid and solid from the scratch and then uh, lead to uh, conservation equations and then uh, navier stokes equation and finally turbulence modeling so thank you sir thank you very much for your uh, nice presentation thank you